So it's been 30 years today, as of today's date, actually, when the bill was signed or it became the law. Has it made a difference? Uh, a big difference. You know, we 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 know uh, for fact that um, you know between you know 600 and 900 lives uh, have been saved each year by the minimum drinking age law. Um, that's a lot of classrooms of kids. That's that equals a lot of 737. Uh, jets. I mean, when you stop and think about it. Well, if, I, if, you, if you went to a thousand people a year, there's 30,000 right there. I mean, it's not quite that high, but still, we're in the thousands of lives saved. Tens of thousands. Yeah. And that's just in traffic crashes. Um, it plays out more broadly, and you would hear this from folks from the National Institutes of Health or from the Centers for Disease Control and Injury Prevention when you talk about um, the positive effects of the higher uniform drinking age law on reducing other uh, you know, health and community issues, crime, uh, violence, um, early onset of alcoholism, and the sort of the downward spiral of associated issues that affect people's lives. So it's about, and it has been always been about saving lives, it's also been about quality of life um, and uh, you know traffic crashes is just one piece of uh, the, um, uh, the you know the challenge when, when you talk about um, teens and drinking and uh, and how that can affect a young person's life throughout their adulthood and so there's there have been tremendous benefits uh, across the spectrum here that have helped feed into um, not only safer communities, but healthier communities.